Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bowling Green Cumberland Presbyterian Church on this fifth Sunday of July. It is good to have each and every one of you here this morning. Uh, if you are visiting with us, we are so grateful that you have come and chosen to worship here. Uh, we have these yellow cards in the pews. If you want to fill one of those out and put it in the offering plate as it goes by later, we'd love to get to know you a little bit better, reach out, send you a letter, give you a phone call, um, just, just see how we could better serve and minister to you here at Bowling Green CP Church. Uh, if you are not visiting with us this morning, it's good to have you all back. So we have a fun Sunday this morning, I hope, I pray. We have a number of announcements, and the first one, I'm going to let Marianne make her announcements for the women's ministry, and she's going to talk about something we all love, cake. So, hmm. You will notice in your bulletin that there is the announcement about the cake sales like we have done in the past. Um, and we will be running those twice this year. Uh, we will be doing it now, uh, starting in August. You can order a cake, um, and the information is there uh, of what kind and what size and what to do with your check. But we also will be running this again in November and December if you are needing a cake for, uh, Chris for the holidays, either Thanksgiving or Christmas or whenever. So we will be doing that again. But in addition, we're going back to having a cakewalk. Uh, so a lot of people, <laughs> did you hear the kids? The kids love the cakewalk. So on August the 13th from 2 to 4, it's a Sunday afternoon here at church, we will be having a cakewalk and a Sunday bar. We will have ice cream and all the toppings to make a Sunday. And we would love for you all to come up out and fellowship with us and uh, partake of the Sunday bar and the cakewalk. There is a sign-up sheet in Heritage Hall for anyone who would like to donate a cake to the cakewalk. So there's a sign-up sheet there if you'd like to do that. Also on August the 24th, the women is having, the CPW women are having a ladies outing and this is for all ladies of the church. And when the men hear where we're going, they probably would want to go too. We're going to the chocolate-covered strawberry restaurant in Gallatin, Tennessee. And there is also a sign-up sheet in Heritage Hall for that as well. We will be eating there at 11.30, so you need to be here at the church by 9.45 so that can we, we can leave at 10. And this is on August the 24th during the week, and we're going to that nice restaurant in, um, in Gallatin, and it also has gift shops and things as well. So be sure and sign up for that, and all women of the church are invited to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. Um, I think we'll be looking for, you know, if people want to donate ice cream, toppings, cakes, all those things uh, for the cake walk coming up. Feel free to leave those in the office building next door. Uh, we got a freezer over there, and, you know, it's, it's fine. Just, just pile those things in there. Uh, we've got a few other announcements this morning that we need to make. Let's see. Where's my list of things? Ah, we have finished up our uh, summer Bible study on Wednesdays, so we will not be having that uh, for the month of August. Uh, we will resume on, it's actually the first Wednesday of September, September the 6th. When we have meat in the middle, we'll have our meal back, we'll have all of those things. So uh, we'll take the month of August off as far as Wednesday evening Bible studies, but we will pick up where we, well, not where we left off. We finished our study for the summer. Uh, we'll pick up with a new study on Wednesday, September the 6th. So please put that on your calendars. Also going out this week were the newsletters. Hopefully, if you haven't quite gotten yours, it will come soon. And one of the things that we mentioned was the member care list that we have here at uh, Bowling Green CP Church. So every member, regular attender, uh, you, are, you are given an elder on the session. Somebody, if you have any concerns or uh, any positive comments you would want to share, you can contact your elder. Uh, but it occurred to us that you might not know who they are or what face goes with which name. So I'd like to introduce the elders so that you can all see. And if uh, uh, elders, if you're able to come down front just for the for Facebook and those worshiping with us online so they can see as well. So I'm going to try to do this, uh, remember all nine of them. So Brad Clark is one of our elders on the session. So if you get your letter and you see that you're uh, underneath Brad Clark for your member care, uh, Brad Clark is your elder. 
Um, Keith Ocello is one of our elders on this session. And he is going to come down front. We'll make sure to do one at a time so we don't get them all confused. All right. Jim Smith is close. Jim Smith is one of our elders on the session. If you see Jim Smith, your name under his uh, name on that elder care list when you get it, if you haven't already gotten it. Uh, Beverly Hodges is one of our elders on the session. Lord Gordon Hanna is one of our elders on the session. Tamara Shaw is one of our elders on the session. Now, she's the one with the baby, but that doesn't... Just because she's your elder doesn't mean that you get to hold the baby. I'll just... Let's see. Bo Earls is one of our elders on the session. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, eight. Ashley Lindsay is one of our elders on the session. And these are our eight elders who are able to be here today. Mike Howard is the ninth elder on the session. He is not feeling well. Um, he has had strep throat this past week. So uh, we will introduce him as soon as he's able to come back to church. Now, so your left to right, Brad Clark, Keith Asello, Jim Smith, Beverly Hodges, Gordon Hanna, Tamara Shaw, Bo Earls, and Ashley Lindsay. And then Mike Howard will introduce him next time he is here. So thank you all. If you want to return to your seats, I appreciate you coming down. Now, if you get your newsletter and you find that you are not on somebody's list, uh, please let us know. And we will make sure that you are, are assigned to an elder or an elder is assigned to you. That might be a better way to put it. And again, this is for all members and regular attenders here at Bowling Green CP Church. So just, just let us know. Call the office. Call myself. And then, of course, in addition to your uh, elder, uh, the, the elder care. No, I always, I always met elder care. So I always say a member care. In addition to member care and the elder that you are assigned to, uh, I am always available as well. So um, please feel, feel free to call, text, stop by the church. I'm always up for anybody that wants to come by and buy me lunch. If you come by and say, uh, I'd like to take you to lunch, I will say yes. Um, and I will cancel all other plans, and uh, we will, well, that's not exactly true, but, but it's close, very close. So, with all of that said, does anybody else have any announcements that they need? Yes, Dana. Okay, so if you didn't hear, so Dana's going to start working on the menu for meat in the middle, um, helping to prepare the meals, uh, serve the meals, clean up afterwards. Uh, if you helped last year with doing that, uh, she's going to assume that you would uh, like to do that again. Um, if not, please let her know. If you didn't do that last year and you would like to help in the kitchen, please let Dana know. So either way, uh, that we appreciate we appreciate your service last year and any service upcoming. Uh, the last announcement I think that I have this morning. Um, uh, so Jordan Bybee, who, who was our youth director for four years, almost four years, would come on Sunday mornings and he would open up the church and he would, do, he would, he would buy the donuts. He'd make the coffee and buy the donuts. And uh, so if that is something that you would like to do, maybe take a month, come open up the church, buy the donuts. We're, we'll just call it the donut ministry. Uh, it can be the best ministry here at Bowling Green CP Church. But uh, there's a sign-up, I think, in the fellowship hall. If you don't find the sign-up, just come and talk to me. Um, so do maybe a month at a time until we find a new uh, youth director and then uh, we'll make him do it or her do it. So uh, anyway, fill in the gaps. With all of that, if you would look at our preparation for worship this morning as we prepare to sing. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world that we might be holy and blameless before God. Amen. 
And with that, if you would stand, if you are able, our call to worship this morning is we have come into our house. Let's stand and sing together. this morning to greet the people that you have gathered with to worship say hi to them share the peace of Christ if you're worshiping with us online this is a great time to refill your coffee continue singing this morning. Uh, if you are able, if you want to stand, our next song is Blessed Be Your Name. We'll stand and we'll sing that together.
Amen. Amen. Well, we bless the name of the Lord because of the promises that he has made to us and his son, Christ Jesus. Our next song is Standing on the Promises. Let's sing that together. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises they cannot fail. When the howling storms of earth and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. Amen. You can be seated. So we prepare our hearts this morning to give our tithes and our offerings. And you look at the offertory thought from Psalm 111, verse 1. It is something that we do together. I don't think that's something we always think about. We think of our offerings as being a very individual thing that we do, which it does start with our own hearts and our own incomes and our own blessings. But... We come together to give our offerings. And the psalmist says this, Let us give thanks to the Lord with all our being, in the company of the upright, all of us together. Let us honor God for the blessings and goodness we have received. And with that thought, I'll ask the ushers to come forward this morning to receive the Lord's offering.
Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we have come together to worship you. We have come together to give our tithes and our offerings. We pray that you would take them, that you would use them through us together as we serve the city of Bowling Green and the Warren County and the communities around us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing this morning? You good? Good? All right. I got one quick question for you. Are you ready? I think it's an easy one. How many of you love a good playset? Anybody here like a good playset? Yes? One, two? Just half? Not more? What do you, what do you like to do on a playset? What's the best part? I will get to that in just a minute. <laughs> you like swings? A slide? Yep. Aria? You like the swings? What do you like, Anthony? You like the slides, but you got to get the slide attached. I understand. What about monkey bars? Anybody have monkey bars on a you like monkey bars on a playset or a fireman's pole? You don't like the monkey bars. All right. Anybody have a... You can't do them yet. Do you like monkey bars? Anybody like to climb? Do you have a... Ah, working on the monkey bars. Good job. I like that. You're, so you, you're persevering. You're, you're per pushing through. I like that. What about you? What do you, what do you think, Gracie? Good job. Good job. You like play sets? Your favorite part of the play set? Oh, like a like a Play-Doh play set? I was thinking about the ones out in the out in the yard or on the the school playground. You like good. So they're fun, right? Play sets are fun. Well, I think when you come to church, you should be able to have some fun. Right? So I thought for the worship service, um, who likes swings? Did you, you like swing? Here, yeah, you have, you play with that. <laughs> and then, did anybody like the trapeze bars? You, you want to swing? Okay, there you go, you got that one. I know there's, I got one more swing, we're running out. You might have to show, or, ooh, this is great right here. You will not find a better bolt than that. That is one <laughs> great bolt. And there's a washer, so you guys can get together, put the bolt and the washer together. Those will go, and uh, let's see. You can have the nut, so you're going to need to talk to those girls over there. And uh, that's another good bolt. So it's a little shorter. All right, so you all have fun. Not having fun? Why aren't, you, why aren't you guys having fun? Do you need the rest of the parts to the play set? Does the, all the parts, really? All the parts have to be together to have fun on the play set? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Did you know that churches are made up of different parts? Did you know we have Sunday school teachers and we have elders and we have volunteers and we have deacons and pastors and musicians and choir members and and people in the pews and we've got people who 
who do the sound and who do the, the videos and the online streaming. And, and then, well, we all just finished singing together, right? Do you know for churches to really work, we need all the parts. Everybody's got to do what God has called them to do. And then that's when church is really fun. And that's when church does the things that God wants us to do. Just like a playset, you've got to have every single part, every single bolt, every single washer. And then, of course, in church, we want kids, right? Children are a very important part. And who do you think brings it all together? What one person brings the whole church together? God and Jesus, that's right. Jesus is the most important part to all of it to make the whole church work. So let's bow our heads this morning and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of the different parts that you give, all the different people that you bring together and you form us into a church family. Father, we pray that you would show us what each of our parts is, what each of us is called to do so that we could have fun working in your kingdom, so that this church would function as well as it possibly can. I thank you for those who do so much around the church. I thank you for these, these children who are growing up and I pray, Lord, that you would keep them, that you would watch over them so that one day they would serve like their moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas. It is in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Our hymn of prayer this morning is As the Deer. So if you will, you can remain seated. Uh, we will sing As the Deer. come to our time of prayer this morning, I do a couple of prayer requests to share with you. 
Uh, please continue to keep Ann Elliott in your prayers. Uh, she's been in and out of the hospital these last three weeks. And just pray for strength and just that they're able to figure out whatever it is that is, uh, that is she, she just can't quite come over. So for, uh, strength for her and for Ward and just to bring her through this uh, season of life. Um, also, um, friends of the Wades uh, out in Phoenix, Arizona, if you'd put their granddaughter, uh, Farah, on your prayer list this morning. Uh, she is uh, suffering from a head injury that was sustained during soccer. And um, just uh, please put Farah on your uh, prayer list. And then um, uh, she was stung by a scorpion uh, while out there as well. So if it's not one, they're literally head to toe. Uh, they need prayers. So uh, the grandmother is stung by the scorpion. The granddaughter, Farah, uh, trying to overcome a head injury through soccer, uh, from soccer. Do we have other prayer requests this morning uh, that we'd like to mention? Yeah. Okay. Put uh, Star Howard on your prayer list, please. She fell and broke her hip. She's already had the hip replacement surgery done, um, so please pray for her recovery. Pastor Mike, my friend, Scott, his mother did pass away this week. Okay. At the funeral yesterday. Yes, we had them on the prayer list last week. Um, Meredith's friend Scott is his mother. She has passed away. And services already. Uh, Beverly. Yeah. Okay. And you said Joanne Cole. Uh, sorry. Sister in law's mother. Okay. So put Joanne Cole on your prayer list. Uh, Beverly's sister in law's mother. Um, a very complicated surgery coming up this Friday. Well, if we don't have any others at this time, let's bow our heads and let us go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning and we have so many things to be thankful for. And we have so many things to ask you for. Things that are beyond our control. Things that only you can take care of. Only you can solve. Father, we lift Anne up to you. We pray that you are watching over her. We pray whatever is continuing to, to stick with her, uh, that you would take it away. We pray, Lord, for a week, for two weeks, for, for months where she does not have to go to the hospital. We lift up um, this young lady to you, Farah, who is, who is striving to overcome a, a head injury sustained during soccer. Lord, we pray that you would watch over her, that you would heal her, as this may very well change the course of her life. We pray for her grandmother, who was stung by a scorpion, that she would heal from that pain and she would recover. We lift up Star to you, Lord. We pray for her therapy, for her... Um, recovery after hip replacement surgery. Thank you that she was able to get it done quickly. We pray that there would be no further complications, no more falls, that she would be restored to health. Heavenly Father, we lift up Joanne to you in the surgery that is coming on Friday. We pray, Lord, that you would watch over the, the surgeons and the nurses and just everyone who will have a part in taking care of her. And Father, we lift up Scott and his family who now turned from praying for healing to praying for comfort and for strength, the passing of his mother. We pray that you would be with that family in the days and weeks to come. We pray all of these things coming to you, praying as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Did we skip the invocation earlier? Did I skip the invocation earlier? Did we have an opening prayer? I think I breezed right past that thing because <laughs> you don't want to go back and start over.
No, I don't know, I'm fine. Well, I'll try to remember that next week. If you have your Bibles, if you want to turn to 1 John chapter 5, we're going to finish up our series in uh, 1 John. Called, we've titled it John in July, and this is the last Sunday of July. So we're going to look at verses 1 through 5 in 1 John chapter 5 here in just a minute. Uh, but just to recap a little bit where, where we've started at and where we, what we've done and talked about, uh, the first Sunday... We talked about the fact that to understand love, to really get a grasp of what God tells us, we first have to be back in a relationship with God himself. And we looked at John chapter, or sorry, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, and we read through verse 2 of chapter 2. Uh, the next Sunday in the series, we talked about loving the unlovable. That is one of the things that distinguishes Christians from the world around us, and that was from chapter 2, verses 3 through 17. And then last week, we talked about loving people without demanding anything in return, right? We love people without expecting something back. And that, again, really defines and distinguishes Christians from the rest of the world. And that was chapter 3, verses 11 through 24. And today, we kind of come full circle. We, we kind of come back to that theme of what it means to be in a relationship with God, the Father in heaven, what, what, how we live, how we respond. And we have to be in that relationship in order to know and understand what love is and if you remember last week when we talked about loving without expecting to be loved back, we, 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 we did one of those things that I honestly don't like to do very often, and that is we had to talk about a Greek word. We talked about the Greek word agape. All right? The Greek language has several words for love, and one of those being agape love, which is when you, uh, you love without the expectation of return. You love sacrificially. Uh, and another part of that definition is you love unconcerned about yourself, but concerned with the greatest good of another person. You love them based on what is best for them and what you can give up to help that happen and make that happen. But what we didn't say, the question that we need to answer is, what is the greatest good for a person? I mean, if we're going to love sacrificially and we're going to love in such a way uh, that we want the best for the people that we love, well, what is that? Right? If you're going to give up your time, your energy, your talent, and say, I, I, I'm going to love you and love what is best for you and do what is best for you, we, we've got to know what that is. And John tells us this morning, now let's read verses 1 through 5 in 1 John chapter 5, and then talk about what the best thing is for the people that we love, because it ha happens to be the best thing for us as well. It's just one and the same. So let's start with verse 1. And John writes this, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. We would ask that God would bless the reading of his word this morning. So if we are going to love people, if we're going to understand what that means, it begins with faith in Jesus Christ. John goes right back to the beginning. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. So it starts with believing in Jesus. It starts with loving God's Son. And then it progresses from that singular child, Jesus, Jesus God's Son, to and everyone who loves, sorry, verse 2, this is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. So from child, singular, Jesus, to God's children, plural, the church, everyone who has placed their faith in Jesus Christ, if you're going to love those people, you've got to keep God's commands. And don't make God mad. And it was uh, several years ago, more than I care to admit, um, I was at Purdue University. It, it, in case you didn't know, I'm a forestry and natural resources graduate from Purdue University. Now, if that seems odd to go from forestry and natural resources into ministry, believe it or not, it's not a weird thing. So when I came into this denomination in Chattanooga, Tennessee, the stated clerk at the time, the late Reverend Forrest Process, Prosser, Reverend Forrest Prosser, so his signature is on my ordination certificate, he also majored in forestry and natural uh, resources at Missouri University and then went into ministry, which 
I found very comforting at the time because I thought I was the only weird one. Uh, but when you find out that somebody else is weird too, then you're either weird together or maybe you're not that weird to begin with. So, uh, but anyway, part of getting that degree from Purdue University was doing a summer practicum in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So driving through Wisconsin, just on the other side of the, the Michigan-Wisconsin border, and we had to do all kinds of fun stuff. Basically, we, went and we played in the woods for six weeks, but you had to do surveys, you had to make maps, top topographical maps, and you know how many trees of this start, sort are here in this area, and how many sort of fish are here in this lake, and all those fun things. And I can remember one particular day, one of our classmates coming back, and he was just pale. He was, he was just white. We were there in the cabin, the campground where we were staying. We're like, what, what happened? And he said, well, I was doing my work. I was doing my schoolwork. And I came up over a ridge in the woods and right between a mother bear and her two cubs. Now, if there's one place you never, ever, ever want to be in the woods, it is between a mother bear and her two cubs because she will kill you if she has to to get back to her cubs. And he probably did the one thing that he, that he froze. It was, it was probably the smartest thing that he could have done. And when he froze, eventually the cubs walked off and the mother bear walked off after the cubs and he was able to come back and tell us about the story. Uh, you, that's something you just don't wanna do. You don't wanna get God mad at you? Love his son, love his children. If there is one way that you can bring God's wrath down on you, it is to be disrespectful to his son. It is to treat his children badly. But how? That's the question that we're trying to answer this morning, right? How do we love God's children? How do we love one another? And he says, by carrying out his commands. So, so there you go. If you want to love God, you have to carry out his commands. Uh, that's the greatest good for any person, for anyone, is to know God, to love God, to understand what his commands are. And sometimes we get stuck. Sometimes we get stuck. How many of you have ever read the Bible, you've studied the Bible, you've been told the things you're supposed to do and the things that you're not supposed to do, and you've said to yourself, that is just too hard. Anybody ever thought it was too hard? It's no fun. God, God is really just trying to ruin our fun. I don't, I don't want to keep his God's commands. I can't keep his commands. Uh, I can't be true to myself if I live the way the Bible says I am supposed to live. But John says exactly the opposite there in verse 3. In fact, this is love for God to keep his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. Now that, that stuck with me this week. His commands are not burdensome. They are exactly the opposite. Now think about this with me for a second. Everything that you own, Everything that you own, every material thing that you own has a created, intended design and purpose. Right? Everything. We, we own two cars. We have a Toyota Camry and we have a gray Honda minivan along with seven billion other people in the world. We have a gray minivan. Now, just to be clear, and if you and my wife will verify this after the service, the Camry is her car. The minivan is my car. And that's just that's just the way that it works. One, it, it's a fantastic family car. It's just about the perfect family car. I don't know what the perfect pastor's car is, but in a few years when we no longer need the perfect family car, we'll get to the perfect pastor's car. I'm thinking, you know, it's it's gotta be reliable, modest, dependable, those sorts. I'm thinking Corvette. That's what I'm thinking is the perfect <laughs> pastor's car. And, you know, practical, that uh, practical car. Never be late for a church service ever. But our minivan is intended to be the perfect family car. That's what it was created to be, it's what it was designed to be. If you go home this afternoon and you turn on the TV and you find whatever, wherever the NASCAR race is for the afternoon, if there is, I'm sorry, I'm not a big NASCAR fan, so I'm, I'm assuming there's a race on Sunday afternoon. Do you know what you will not see when you turn on the TV? You will not see a gray minivan racing around that track with the stock cars. I would love to see it. I think that would be highly entertaining to see the dad in the front driving and the kids asking to go to the bathroom and the dad's getting all upset about it because 
they were just at the pit stop and got four new tires and you know filled the tank with gas they were supposed to go then but they didn't and the wife is saying listen honey you got to stop if the kids have to go they have to go and he's like we're never going to finish the race if we have to stop all the time sometimes it's like to think about stuff do you ever just like to think about stuff and let your mind run with it why won't you see that because minivans were not designed to be race cars. You try racing one of those things around that track, you're gonna die. I mean, you most likely will die. God created us with intention and purpose and design to live by his commands. That's why John says they're not a burden because that's how God created us to live. And we're part of a fallen, sinful, messed up world, and we think that those commands are a burden and that there's no way we can keep them, and what's the point anyway? But no, it's, that's how we were created. Now, what are some of those commands? And that's a fair question to ask. John doesn't tell us specifically in, the, in 1 John here, in this letter, what those com commands are. But if you go back, you can go all the way back to Exodus, chapter 20 and the Ten Commandments. Moral commands, by the way, if you ever wonder, why do we bring the Ten Commandments forward from the Old Testament to the New Testament, but not all those other laws? There's a difference between the moral laws in the Old Testament and Jewish purity ritual laws. We don't bring the ritual purity laws forward. We bring the moral laws forward. And just in case you need a refresher, number one, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. Number two, you shall not take the, Lord, the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the, to keep holy the Lord's day. Keep the Sabbath. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill or murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not covet your neighbor's stuff. Now, I'm not saying that we'll ever be perfect in this lifetime. But if you took those things don't steal, don't cheat, don't murder, don't want what other people have. And if we were all at least trying, how much better would this world be? If we were all at least trying to keep those commands. I'm not saying the world would be perfect, but I bet it wouldn't be in the shape it's in today. And you know why? Because God created us with intention and with design to live in obedience to him. And John says, if you want to love people, and if you want to do what's best for them, you love them by keeping God's commands, and you teach them to do the same. And I know that we're messing up, and we don't do a great job of that all the time, because there's a whole world of people who say, I think I know better than you do, God. I think I've got things figured out pretty well. I've been around for a while. I'm, I'm a, I'll try it my way. I, can, I got this. I got this. You can be my backup. I'd appreciate it if you'd be my backup. And if I get in a jam, which happens a lot, then, then I'll ask you to get me out of it. But I, I think I can figure this out. And we're not doing real good at that, are we? When we leave God out of the picture and we're not trying to obey him, we just we keep messing things up. If you were here back in, um, I think maybe February... Uh, we talked about uh, strawberries and cream Dr. Pepper. Anybody remember the strawberries and cream Dr. Pepper? Doctor, regular Dr. Pepper, in case you weren't, in case you don't remember, regular Dr. Pepper has 23 flavors. And then I was walking through the grocery store one day and I saw strawberries and cream Dr. Pepper, so up to 25 flavors. And I was skeptical about it, but I thought, eh, we'll, we'll try it. I don't know what two more flavors will do for the other 23, but it was fantastic. If you haven't tried strawberries and cream Dr. Pepper yet, you should. That is really is a good tasting soda. So I've noticed recently there's a new flavor in the grocery store. I don't know if you've seen this or not. Tangy ketchup Doritos. And I saw those. They've been around for a few months and I thought, man, that sound, those sound terrible tangy ketchup Doritos, but you know the strawberries and cream Dr. Pepper thing, that worked out. So I got real adventurous this week. Kids and I were walking into Kroger and I said, you know what? We're going to try some tangy ketchup Doritos. It sounds terrible, but you just, you'd never know. 
So Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday, we had to get a couple other things. We walked into Kroger, and right there they were, right at the front door, tangy ketchup Doritos. I said, we are going to get a bag of those Doritos. We got them. We paid for them. We went back to the parking lot to our beautiful gray minivan. We got in, didn't even wait to get home. I said, okay, kids, let's try them. We opened the bag, and they were awful. They, they were honestly... <laughs> They were just awful. So I ate them all. <laughs> it's like when you see a car accident on the side of the road and you cannot look away. You know you should look away so that you can see where you're going and you don't end up in an auto accident, but you just, you can't. You can't. I thought, you know what? Maybe the next chip will get better. Maybe if I eat enough of these tangy ketchup Doritos, I will acquire the taste for tangy ketchup Doritos. But each one of them was just worse than the one before. It just until the end of the bag. That's sin. Maybe the next time. Maybe the next time I do things my way, maybe then it will work out. Maybe the next time I'm a little more selfish in my marriage than I should be, maybe then things will work out and go the way that I want them. Maybe the next sin, maybe the next time I get mad at my boss and yell at him or her, maybe they'll figure out that I really want to be in charge and it'll be a better workplace. Maybe the next time, right? Maybe the next chip. Maybe the chip after that, the next sin, the next sin. And it doesn't work. It never works. And we get stuck. But John tells us we're not stuck anymore. When you look there in verses 4 and 5, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the person who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. You're not stuck anymore, says John. You're not stuck anymore in this broken down, run down world where nothing works quite right. All you have to do is love God and keep his commands and they're not a burden, they're blessings. They're blessings. Did you ever think about that? Did, did you know nobody told God that he had to send his son? There's nobody above God in heaven that said, you have to provide a path of salvation for these creatures that you created, these human beings who continually disobey you, who continually stumble and fall and hurt one another and you. And he sent his son. And he loved us to the point where he gave his life on the cross. And then God says, I want you to love in return. And Jesus taught before he died, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Take those Ten Commandments that are not burdens. They're incredible blessings. How merciful and wonderful is God to tell us, you broke it, here's how to fix it. And by the way, let me fix it for you. Love my son, love my children, love one another, keep my commands. If you'd bow your heads with me this morning, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings that are your commands. We thank you for the forgiveness of our sins, for breaking those commands over and over and over again that your son made on the cross. We pray, Lord, that we would realize that they are not a burden. That it is a blessing to live the way that you have designed us and created us to live. Watch over each and every one of us as we go our ways this week. That we would obey you, that we would love others seeking their greatest good, which is to tell them about you the commands that you have given, and the forgiveness that is available in your son. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we stand this morning, we'll sing our hymn of consecration. I'll be down front. Uh, if you need somebody to pray with you and for you, if you'd like to make Bowling Green CP Church your church home, or if you need to know more about the Savior in heaven. But let's stand and we will sing, I have decided to follow Jesus.
the acolytes to come down forward this morning and take the light of Christ out to the world. And as they do that, if you would receive the benediction this morning, lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. Thank you.